Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about secure digital or SD cards. This will include explaining all currently defined SD standards with a particular focus on those in actual use. And we'll also have some speed tests of different SD interfaces and technologies, including SanDisk QuickFlow. So let's go and get started. In 1999, the first SD cards were what we now call standard size. Smaller mini SD cards then arrived in 2003, followed by even smaller micro SD cards in 2005. Today, mini cards are rare, with most devices using either standard or micro. All SD card form factors are available in a range of capacity types. The first of these is SD, which supports cards up to 2GB in size. Next comes SDHC, or Secure Digital High Capacity, for cards over 2GB and up to 32GB. After that, we have SDXC, or Secure Digital Extended Capacity, with a size over 32GB and up to 2TB. And in June 2018, the SD Association announced a fourth capacity type called SDUC, or Secure Digital Ultra Capacity, for cards over 2TB and up to 128TB. Even though the SDUC standard was released over six years ago, at the time of making this video, in January 2025, the highest capacity cards on the market are 2TB SDXC, such as the SanDisk Extreme Pro Media. However, in August 2024, SanDisk announced that it will be introducing a 4TB micro SDUC card and an 8TB full size SDUC card with this likely to occur in 2025. When it comes to high capacity SD cards, it's also worth being aware that a great many fakes are advertised online. So do take care and only purchase high capacity cards from reputable dealers. SD cards may be labelled with up to four different speed classes, all of which indicate the minimum sequential write speed that a card is capable of. The first SD cards were Class 2, Class 4, Class 6 or Class 10, with the number appearing in a letter C and the classes indicating a minimum write speed of 2, 4, 6 or 10 megabytes per second. Next came the UHS, or Ultra High Speed Speed class, which indicates if a card can sustain either a 10 or 30 megabytes a second sequential write speed by placing a number 1 or 3 inside a letter U. Next, we have Video Speed class, with the figure 6, 10, 30, 60 or 90 appearing after a letter V, and indicating a minimum sustained write speed of 6, 10, 30, 60 or 90 megabytes per second. Finally, we have the SD Express speed class. This was introduced in October 2023 and only applies to SD Express cards, as I'll detail in the next segment of this video. Marked as E150 to E600, the SD Express speed class indicates a minimum read write performance of 150, 300, 450, or 600 megabytes per second. Finally, it's worth noting that some SD cards are labelled with a fourth application performance class, which can be either class 1, which is denoted as A1, or class 2, which is denoted as A2. Here, the minimum sustained write speed is 10 megabytes per second. However, A1 and A2 cards are also certified for a minimum number of IOPS, or input-output operations, per second. High IOPS values are important when an SD card is used for running an operating system or applications. So, it's worth seeking out an A1 or A2 card if it'll be used to store phone apps or as the system drive on a single board computer.
Today, nine official SD bus interface standards have been specified by the SD Association. These relate to the speed of electronics and the physical connection pins used to transfer data, and are a hardware specification that is quite distinct from an SD card's speed class. The first three official bus interface standards, default speed, high speed, and UHS-1, transfer data at a theoretical maximum of 12.5, 25, or 104 megabytes per second, and do so using the single row of pins found on the back of the vast majority of SD cards. In 2014, the SD Association introduced a new bus interface called UHS-2. This can transfer data at up to 312 megabytes a second and achieves this using a second row of pins. UHS-2 cards are typically used for higher-end video and photo recording, with MemoryCardLab.com currently listing 87 cameras that have a UHS-2 SD card slot. And all 4K Blackmagic Design monitor recorders also have UHS-2 slots. Next, it's important to note that SanDisk and some other manufacturers have managed to increase the speed of UHS-1 cards using proprietary technologies. These can allow write speeds of up to 150 megabytes a second and read speeds of up to 250 megabytes a second using just the one standard row of pins. SanDisk calls this technology QuickFlow, and whilst no cameras or other recording hardware write data using this standard, QuickFlow SD card readers greatly speed up the transfer of data from a compatible UHS-1 card. And, fear not, we'll be testing one out in the next part of this video. Back with the official standards, in 2017, the SD Association released a specification for UHS-3. This facilitates data transfer at up to 624 megabytes a second and uses the same extra row of pins as UHS-2. However, as far as I can ascertain, at the time of making this video, no camera or recorder has a UHS-3 SD card slot and no manufacturer has released any UHS-3 media. It's also very unlikely that anybody ever will make any UHS-3 media or hardware. Not least, this is because we now have four additional standards under the collective banner SD Express. Introduced from 2018 onwards, these transfer data over a PCIe interface at either PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4 speeds and using either one or two PCIe lanes. This is achieved using a second row of pins for the single lane specifications and two extra rows of pins for dual lane. It is, however, important to note that the second row of pins on an SD Express card is not backwards compatible with UHS-2 or UHS-3. Granted, any SD card should always work in any device or any reader using the top row of standard pins and the official 104 megabytes a second UHS-1 bus interface. But the lack of compatibility between the bus interfaces for UHS-2 and UHS-3 and the four SD Express bus interface standards is a major constraint on the practical adoption of any of the newer SD card bus interface specifications beyond UHS-2. Today, some SD Express cards, such as these from SanDisk and this one from Adata, have been released. However, no cameras or other capture hardware can write to them using their SD Express interface although this can be achieved using a dedicated SD Express reader. Moving from theory to practice, here we have the three models of SD card on which I currently rely. Specifically, we have a 256GB SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS-1 card, which there for us one row of pins, we can see on the back like that, and these are the kinds of cards I use in my video cameras. Next to it, we have got a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS-2 card, which has therefore got two rows of pins, as we can see on the back like that. And these are the cards I use in my HDMI recorders. 
And then finally, we have got here a SanDisk Extreme Pro Micro UHS-1 card. Again, with one row of pins on the back, so we can see. We can just turn it over. Come on, turn over. There we are. It's got one row of pins on this card. And this card also has an A2 application class rating. And this is therefore my go-to card on which to install single board computer operating systems. As we can see, in addition to their speed class ratings, the two full-size cards also have a speed printed on them. And this is a manufacturer claimed maximum. For the 64 gigabyte UHS-2 card, this is 300 megabytes a second, which is less than the theoretical maximum for UHS-2 of 312 megabytes a second. However, for the 256 gigabyte UHS-1 card, the claim maximum speed is 200 megabytes a second, which is beyond the theoretical maximum of 104 megabytes a second for UHS-1. And this is because this card uses SanDisk QuickFlow technology to offer a higher rate of data transfer. And indeed, our microSD card also uses SanDisk QuickFlow. Over here, I've got two USB 3 SD card readers. And the first has got a standard UHS-1 interface as well as UHS-2 interface, as we can see if we turn it over, it's printed on the back, UHS-2, whilst this reader is only UHS-1, but this has got quick flow technology. And so we're now going to use these two readers to test out the cards we just looked at and to demonstrate their comparative performance. We'll begin with the 256 gigabyte UHS-1 quick flow card in the reader with a standard UHS-1 interface. And if we run a test with Crystal Disk Mark like that, and then speed on through, we get headline read and write speeds of 98.72 and 85.95 megabytes a second, which are typical for a decent UHS-1 card. However, if we now put the same card in the QuickFlow UHS-1 reader and repeat the tests, we get far better read and write speeds of 201.93 and 141.42 megabytes a second. So, if you regularly download a lot of media files from UHS-1 cards, it's worth buying those with QuickFlow or similar technology and getting a compatible reader. Just to again prove this point, here I've run the tests for the 64GB microSD UHS-1 card with QuickFlow, which, as we can see, delivers more than double the read performance in the QuickFlow reader, if only slightly improved write performance, which is the case for lower capacity QuickFlow cards. Moving on, let's now test the 64GB UHS-2 card in the UHS-1 only reader and also the UHS-2 reader. And here, the test shows the big difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2, with UHS-2 delivering more than three times the read and write performance and beating all previous results. This said, UHS-2 cards are far more expensive, with UHS-1 QuickFlow cards with a compatible reader offering the best price performance ratio in most application scenarios. Finally, do please note that this video is not sponsored by SanDisk. I just happen to always use their cards. And, as I've stressed, other manufacturers, including Samsung and Kingston, do offer an alternative to QuickFlow for delivering improved UHS-1 data transfer speeds. For 25 years, SD cards have served us well, with capacities continuing to increase. However, we now have more bus interface specifications defined than in actual use, and this is likely to remain the case. Not least, phone and tablet manufacturers have not moved beyond UHS-1 and show no signs of doing so. Camera manufacturers have also not advanced beyond UHS-2 and also have little reason to change. Why? Well, for a start, UHS-2 and UHS-3 are not pin compatible with SD Express. And given that UHS-1 offers 104 megabytes a second transfer speed, which is 832 megabits per second, and UHS-2 
offers 312 megabytes per second or 2496 megabits per second, there is little requirement for higher speed photo and video recording interfaces. And where these are desired, we already have CF Express, Express P2 and AXS memory cards, as well as direct to SSD recording. And as we've seen, SanDisk's QuickFlow and related technologies from other manufacturers now provide a cost-effective means of rapid data downloads from UHS-1 cards. Even single-bore computers are now less reliant on SD cards, with eMMC and M.2 SSDs increasingly used as system drives, and UHS-1 cards perfectly sufficient for lower-cost boards. I therefore suspect that in five years' time, most SD cards will still be UHS-1, with a few being UHS-2, just like the card I'm currently recording on. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,